Kiki Kitty. Yumi's definitely a champion that can stand pretty strong by herself, but it's definitely not something you can blind pick in terms of the blue side first pick. We do see Kalissa being locked in for LWX here. Very aggressive, as we can tell from just the first pick. Again, that was something that worked in game number one, but for Hope on the other side. It's interesting to see Kalista come through when in solo queue, we know that Kalista right now is not really looked at. On the other side though, this is a pick that we saw also in game one, Kitty. So we are just reversing it up. This oh, time Syndra. it's gonna go to Hung and Syndra as well was also banned game one. So that's available if they choose to lock it in. Syndra was banned both game one and game two, but finally we can see this new Syndra after her passive got changed. So Syndra, I believe, scales with levels and she also stacks her passive. And once she hits a certain amount of passive stacks, her damage increases. So this new Syndra is definitely something to look out for in those late game team fights because she did the funny thing and she pressed ulti. The <laughs> funny thing, yeah. And it's been a while <laughs> since, uh, I guess, the, the Syndra change, Kitty. Do you remember what it was? I feel like it was, it was just after Worlds, no? It so had it was to a, be, yeah. A little bit ago. So that change is something we didn't get to talk about. We can spore it in game because going up against a Akali this time around, Shank's definitely going to be looking lane dominant as Hao Ye also locks in the Wukong yet again. We're going to have to see what this gets paired up though because on the other side, Kitty, WE don't actually have a bot lane built up in any regard yet. Akali gets locked in once again from Care. Maybe he can redeem himself from his first game performance, but... From what I know of Kara's history, he is a very aggressive uh, mid lane player that links up well with his uh, duo in the jungle. So I'm expecting more proactive plays from FPS this game, especially when you have an Akali that can close the gap like uh, between an Aphelios. Yeah, it's important to note as well that, you know, some of this dive, some of this all in uh, didn't work in game number one, but it is something that Kara's been sticking with so far in the series. We've got a Renata ban though on the side of WE and it's interesting considering that when we last left Aphelios off, he was partnered with Renata so many times here, Kitty. And I'm kind of wondering if they just want to look for something like the Lulu there and keep banning away supports, but I guess FBX have answered that question. Lulu has been taken off the map, uh, off the game, sorry, and Renata as a response. But Lulu was definitely the best champion as a counter to the Akali, paired up with an Aphelios. I expect uh, WE needs something that can really guide the Cephelius throughout the early game and let him scale into the late game. But with these two really present supports banned out, he might just go with a melee support. Oh, melee support. What's on the board? Uh, something like the Nautilus again, as mentioned. Leona also available. Kitty, we can look at that as maybe a last pick for Iwandi. On the other side, maybe Bubu wants a priority top. Kasante has been left open for this final game where we unfortunately saw the Kasante lose in the first game in this FPX up against WE series. We, we did see him do great things. He wasn't dying for the majority of the game, but just this time WE has the damage to make up for his tankiness. Yeah, it could be through something like the Gwen, right? I mean, this is a pick that Chala, who played so much of last year, it'd be interesting to see, especially since uh, we do have another AP solo laner in Kaori there. But this is a personal favorite. More of a niche here for the top laner of FPX. And Gwen is locked in. I just love this series. We've pretty much seen completely different comps. But even just so many random picks I, I didn't think Ooh. we'd be talking about in 13.1. Maybe this is one of them too. A little Donga has been hovered for Lilla. <laughs> Lilla on the Donga. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's follow in the steps of the... The world champion, I guess, as well. It's been huge, Kitty. Uh, we've got a support donger on the other side. What is the support for I want? No way. They're laughing that can about stay it. Stay in kick of event. No, please, no. I mean, honestly, would love to see it, but let's be real. I want has been great on the engaged support so far, and maybe this is a little bit more straightforward. But no, Soraka. Okay, this is just a very different bottom lane. This is a very different bottom lane. Well, with the Heimerdinger being single-handedly being uh, meta and introduced to 13.1 by Beryl at Worlds, Ash support is also something we've been seeing kind of floating up back into the meta where they're just both 
disgustingly annoying in lane and yeah. team fights and they do so much damage but like i wendy has locked in the soraka she will do relatively well into a heimerdinger uh, lane because heimerdinger is a traditional counter to those melee supports like the nautilus leona has some leeway she doesn't have a hook but heimerdinger singles fpx versus we our very first opener here for the lpl 2023 year now comes to a close we return to summoners rift and Kitty, I've got a lot of questions to ask you. More about the dynamics you were just talking about. You're mentioning how Gwen can operate, you know, I guess against this comp that has a lot of range, but won't be able to deal as much with Gwen. Walk me through a little bit about how this early game goes, considering that we do have some, you know, good scaling, but also some snowball effects from the bottom side of the map too. This Heimerdinger realistically should be placing his turrets first thing into the game which we already see Lila doing in the bottom brush where that will gain automatic lane presence for the side of FPX and mm -hmm. through that Halia can perhaps invade on his side for the first time throughout this best of three series and we can True. find a lead from that angle. Okay so playing through bot in the early game I like that relying on the Heimerdinger as well that we've all seen at Worlds. On the other side uh, seeing that Syndra finally debut after two bans in a row at the start of the series Feels kind of nice to, um, you know, see Shanks on it when I think Shanks has been pretty well as a performing mid laner. Game number two was not as great outside the lane, but we know that game one Azir Kitty was clean as anything. So high expectations here for his final game of the series. Very anticipated indeed. And this Soraka was an interesting pick to say the least because we don't genuinely see a lot of Soraka out of all the enchanters that you can pick out of the pool but since Heimerdinger has so much poke and this Callista can freely walk up to chuck an E or a Q then this Soraka always has the sustain to heal the Felios back where they can safely farm under tower. You're looking at the late game as you said you know maybe it's about how WE's bottom lane progresses forward. Uh, junglers are starting on the top side of the map so it is going to be a bot side focus as you mentioned but right now LWX and Lola about to hit level 2 off this minion. They've got the push in, they've got the stun as well, even under turret, I want to take him down to half HP, luckily able to get a Q down to heal back up, but that's the lane dominance we expected and talked about to open up this game. Taking a look at this top lane matchup, we have the Gwen as a counterpick to the blind Cassante. Gwen relatively does well into these oh things. God. Oh! He doesn't have flash in his ghost. Yeah, but it's it's not a good start. Now, what were you saying about the top lane matchup? Is, we uh, can't say about it. We can't. We can't because it's mid now. Care's got the shuriken flip, but isn't going to take it as he sees the jungler. Meanwhile, we look at action the bottom side. Hope has to flash away because the plasma grenade from uh, Lola on this Heimerdinger just lands too close. Hope down with the summoner immediately. He'll even burn from my Wandy to boot. Good attempt from the jungler of FPX, but... Bring it back to this top lane. This Gwen is a very good answer to a tanky Cassante. She does so well into these traditional tanks because she shreds maximum health just like that. Where Cassante is going to be constantly pushed in just because of the DPS difference. And that allows Halia to have a lot more freedom on the map, especially when even your bot lane is constantly pushed in. You talked about how you're finally getting revenge for Hung invading constantly game after game. Already doing it towards this red side is. Scuttle's going to be taken, but how are you here to play the defensive angle in this bottom lane, or at least towards mid as Shanks is moving out. But Care just there to zone him off. Good scatter the week here from Shanks. Is, oh, we're back bot yet again. Remember that there's no heal available, no flashes. Hope against the turret. Not going to be rendered out at this time. Walks back in, and Hope takes a big brunt, but Iwandi is there to heal. Low health bars on both these ADs here, Kitty. But you can still say that LWX and Lola are playing out the lane as expected. Oh, but Hung is back. Again, this is so annoying. How? Yeah, going to be spotted out by a lens. He knows he's there. Smite, he yoink. It. The red buff belongs to us. Hung now might have to flash, though. Uh, is it worth it, Kitty? Do you, is it worth it maybe just for the mental game? Hung has to have a little bit of a grudge against Haoya because Haoya is not having a great start to each game in the <laughs> best of three series. I don't think he's obtained a single red buff so far for his first red buff at least to each game, but yep. uh, maybe we can we can only dream. I think it's, uh, look, at this point, it's definitely a mental edge for Hung. You know, you call worth an all chat, you type it in after that one. Hung picking up the red buff and again, setting up his clear quite nicely. 
This is definitely going to be a jungler to watch. As this is his very first series, guys. Just remember that Hung has come up from the LDL, the secondary league, and he wasn't on a, a championship team. He wasn't on a, a top-tier team. Hung's come through to the LPL, and all of a sudden, the confidence is just massive. As he's got a 20 CS lead, Kitty, now challenging for topside scuttle as well. He'll back off this one, but you have to remember that he's still going to have a major advantage uh, with gold at the very least. That subtle cap could realistically been the vise, but Asante was pushed out. Oh no. Oh no. Hope was hopeful, but LWX comes oh, through. Nice. Ran for first blood. Dodges the Q from Iwandi. A quick hop around means Iwandi who gets stunned up. Oh, the oh. Donga combination. Now LWX will die, but Lola must be Lola laughing at this <laughs> point with that trade. I had to, Kitty. I had God. to. God. What a perfect way to describe that entire situation. Lola coming back out on top and grabbing the double kill onto WE's bowling. He gets a very sneaky zoning stun, which doesn't technically land on the Ophelios, but look at the damage that is unexpected from Kalissa. Flashing forward, committing to the fight, and gets that triumph for the kill. Soraka tries to run away, but LWX lands one more Q and executes her as well. Double kill picked up. It's a Vampire Acceptor. And those Berserker Greaves that every Callista main loves getting up as a first purchase have already been there as well. So a great start here for FPX just through bot through the lane that really needed to succeed, as you were saying, Kitty. And I love that we were talking about how the early game could pan out with how, yeah, you know, pathing down there. It hasn't been about the jungler. It's just been pure 2v2 with no jungle intervention whatsoever as it's now enabled them to open up the bot side with Dragon as well. Definitely expected from the side of FPX where they're playing extremely aggressive with this lane priority that they have been gaining from the Heimerdinger pick. L uh, I'm surprised that WE ordered, uh, well, kind of played into that 2v2 because you are missing that much damage compared to the Soraka where you have a Heimerdinger in your pockets. So not the best decision from WE and it puts them significantly behind with Kalista picking up two kills. And look, you, you look at multiple lanes, right? Mid is doing well, of course. Jungle, we talked about the CS advantage before, but even topside, Shalahu is, is playing pretty comfortably at the moment with a small CS lead as this wave gets pushed into him. So right now, FPX are chilling in this early game. And Kitty, we talked a lot about how the scaling goes with Shalahu with the range that WE have to play into, you know, the, the, the howling mist from Shalahu on the Gwen. But I'm going to oh, pause for a second because... Yeah, Hope is just getting run down. Rend at the ready. Comes through. Hope now going to have to rely on that Severum to deal with this Callista as LWX is putting through the lane dominance. Vampire Acceptor also help him stay nice and healthy here. So this is just a, a big move. But meanwhile, Hung's here. Assault and Battery going to be used. Rather, Cease and Desist comes through. And LWX gets shut down and it goes to Hope. Lola is now spat back out. But guess what? Standing here, even with the stun I want will get traded off. But it's a two for one in favor of WE who are now on the board. Really good response gank from Hung because obviously LWX had to burn Flash for that 2v2 in Balling prior. So he really focuses down the people that don't have Flash. And that's been prominent throughout the three game series. And I really respect Hung for just being so proactive as the buy in this game where he picks up from people's mistakes. But again, on the other side, I think how yeah can be conducted, uh, congratulated rather for his patience in this series so far. Has come back up after the play in the bottom side. It's going to be a herald as a response. So it's not like FPX are losing out completely here, Kitty. But it'll be about where this herald goes as we look at the replay down in the bottom side in first person, apparently, or at least close. Yep, to. he dodges the vision perfectly from the ribbon bush, and Callista gets silenced straight away after the Vi is ulting. But Heimerdinger surprisingly gets a revenge kill on the Soraka, and that's just how oppressive and how much damage a single support can do when it comes to these bot lane fights. Blasting Wand, he's also got the Orb of Oblivion. So we do actually have quite a nice bit of AP here for Lola in this early game, as Orb going to be used, LWX is going to be targeted. But no kill as of yet. WE just send out a couple of tools. And after that trade, Elder Rex is just going to have to rely on once again healing back up. But I'm more curious if Hung's going to get spotted out on this bottom side here, Kitty, because 
The Vi jungle once again hovering around this bottom lane, looking to make a repeat gank, or at least set up for the threat. Hong is looking for his second gank to this bot lane where this Kalissa still doesn't have flash up, but red buff is up. Oh uh, no. Which one is, is he going to go for? I think the kill this time behind enemy lines. Hope doesn't have that ultimate available, but now as Lola gets spotted out, cease and desist on top. He can't move. Hung with his second kill. Smart pathing leads to a beautiful gank from WE's jungle. Something that's been stellar for the jungle of WE is how he avoids vision for these ganks. First, he, get, he goes for a lane gank, which successfully gets pulled off and results in a kill on the ADC. This time, he did the banana combo. He walked through to the red buff, spotted the red buff being up, but the Wukong wasn't there just quite yet, so he just went for the kill because, obviously, there was no jungle there in Kalista backed earlier. Yeah, I mean, the jungler not being there, the, the pathing, as you mentioned, I think is the main point, right? The vision being dodged. Sets up now for a, a very, very early Chem Punk Chainsaw. Kitty, we saw this last year. This is what the Vi jungles were picking up nice and early because... There's a good power spike, just solid damage. Once again, it means he's going to be the first one picking up an item on Summoner's Rift, but won't be the only one as Herald gets placed in the bottom lane, which is going to be a nice injection of gold back into LWX. Kara is here to hover for this bot lane plate. Not much is going to do go from there, but all these um, all this plate money going towards the bot side of the jungle, they're going to get Ooh. their mythic items extremely fast. Okay, ulti flash doesn't get the shuriken flip. Confident with the rest of FPX hovering nearby, and that's a flash from the jungler kitty right before dragon spawns in 15 seconds. Okay, gonna get scattered the weak. Shank's trying to do some excess damage, but that might even just set up dragon here for FPX to make it too. I already noticed that Kara is being a lot more proactive in this early game where he has been hovering these side lanes all the time. And with Talia also playing towards this Callista, which is the current win con for FPS, because uh, Gwen is doing relatively well in a counter matchup. So they just have to lift up LWX through the laning phase and really yeah. get him ahead and get his uh, immortal shield bow extremely fast. It might happen if they're able to find anything off this dragon. Now live and sitting there, how yes spotted out, but WE able to set themselves up with the push here with the help of Hope. And I wonder alongside how he is moving on in. LWX forcing this aggression as well, but just note the TP through mid and care moving down. This might be pretty bloody pretty soon. Kitty, I'm kind of wondering if care pops the all in. There's no ultimate available. Remember, that was used on Hung before, but Hung now has a cease and desist if WE want to make a play. But it's going to have to be fast because this drag is just going to be rendered to oblivion pretty soon. is the question now fate's call no i want he almost dead oldies out that affiliate assault hits everyone a scout of the week of a it legend doesn't matter. but it does not you're exactly right because dragon goes down they get hung and i guess we were just a bit too late Respects to care for dropping his midways, getting pushed in. He's currently down one wave, but from all these constant roams towards the bot lane river, they have been able to secure every single objective, which is two drags. And with Callista and Heimerdinger naturally being able to have that extra pressure from the push, this game going to two dragons at 13 minutes is really going to fast in the tempo for Aphelios to do anything. So we can take a replay at this, but Lola goes in for the stun and tries to engage here where the Seratha nearly dies, but look at LWS, he's untouched. I'm sorry, he got cute there, but he's untouched in this fight where yeah. the, the team fight was unfortunately scattered for WE. And the fact that it was scattered for WE and with an Aphelios, is, as you said, needs time to get those items. Damage just wasn't enough to round it out. Another kill goes over to FPX. The dragon as well. And you just look at those items starting to be built up. The immortal shield bow you're waiting to see is there. Also with a baby rage knife on top. We've got Care who's pretty close to getting that night harvester in the mid lane. Divine Sunder in jungle. Leeching Leer up top side. Morella Nomicon, which is now very gold efficient, guys. You know, don't don't go into the church. Stay outside. Just listen to what I'm saying. Morella Nomicon gold efficient those are the words and it's been picked up as the first item here for lola so kitty we do have some of those carries we talked about 
hitting their stride finally here on the map. I'm kind of wondering what we set up for next because Herald's up in 10 seconds, but it's been controlled by FPX quite well with the Vision Game topside. Gwen has constant push in this lane, and whenever this Gwen does move down eventually for the Herald... Oh! Oh, caught out. Good scout of the week. Unleashed power. Not enough, but Hung gets the kill by default. I think that was just red buff in the end. Third kill here for the Vi, but it opens up mid, which could be the first turret taken here for WE. How yeah, hovering off to the wing. Wave getting pushed out means, unfortunately, the turret won't die just yet, but still, Kitty, a good pick onto Kezakali. He finally got punished for roaming towards that bot side without a lot of vision provided by Lola. But Halia is going to start the Herald and most likely uh, gets it because both top laners had to back with Cassante running back to lane. Oh, an engage. Gale Force ulti onto LWX. Wants a solo here. Hope gets a bit of help from Iwandi as Lola and LWX back off. That's great damage here with Hung now being spotted out on the ward. FPX's bottom lane have to pay respect here, Kitty, and they need to wait for Care to get nearby. With the Callista's immortal, immortal shield bow being down here, she is oh. very vulnerable to the Vi and Syndra lockdown from the side of WE. And she is technically, well, I wouldn't say she's the main carry because we have Lola on this Heimerdinger support who has been an absolute menace the entire game. But look at the rotations from the mid jungle of FPX. They had their eyes set on protecting this bot lane. And getting a pick onto Hung, he was around the red buff, luckily able to get away with the help of a blast cone, so... Uh, the pick that doesn't come through means that for WE, they get to stick around and this turret right for the taking. It's going to be first turret of the game, guys, and it's going to push WE into a gold lead. If only 600, still meaningful when we talked about some of the scaling elements, and for WE, trying to get over this hump that started by the two dragon advantage. I'm pretty surprised that Harold was picked up by Halia on uh, earlier in the game, but bot lane for FPX falls down first. And maybe it's because of the range or how they played out the map where FPX, I mean, Heimerdinger and Callista couldn't really walk up anymore and their tower eventually fell down from just pure autos. But that's a really big point for WE for opening up the map for this third Dragon Soul point. Yeah, because 38 seconds, we're about to brawl. And I really hope we get to see, you know, some of this powerhouse of Shanks come through because it's been a quiet game for the Syndra. It's been the lane, it's been nothing else. But Kitty, what do you want to see in this fight? I mean, what are we kind of looking towards? You've already talked about LWX has just picked up Quincy's Rageblade as a second item. I think it's still a little bit early for Hope, but is it down to mid laners? Is it, is it about some of the picks before the dragon here for WE? Give me, give me the two cents. Oh, is it Shala? Who's going to get the picks? That's the biggest question as well. As Harold goes down in the mid lane. Uh, what does setup look available. like here? That's what I need to know. I need setup here, Kitty, for WE. Summoners are all available across the map, but what if this Vi just decides to flash ulti LWX and kills oh, yeah. him straight away with the Senior Burst? Well, maybe Wukong starts it first. You talk about the Vi on top. There you go. Scout of the week. Beautiful. Shanks lines it up as. Shalahu wants to go all out, but now he's so stuck in the middle of five people. The Cassante curse, absolutely real. With five members of WE left standing, and FBX are blown apart through their topside jungle. WE has barely picked up their mythics, and that was the amount of burst that the Syndra was able to deliver with just a Ludens and Sork Boots. Wukong was pretty much deleted after the second he engaged onto the bot lane of WE, which didn't result in any summoners being spent, which is really good and an overall win for WE. An overall win to stop the, the dragon stacking, right? As you were saying, FPX was starting to build up the tempo here, but WE now with a 2k gold lead and Kitty, walk us through this because it was Halia who started this. Yeah, a, a really good engage from Halia, but no flashes needed to be burned. Vi instantly locks down this Wukong. Syndra targets him down straight away and Xiaolahu is trying to do as much DPS but he doesn't have that heal cut available and Soraka heals it all back. So really well played from the bot lane of W and playing it out and creating that space that Haoya tried to close. But this Syndra is going to become a very big problem in these team fights if she doesn't die first. And remember that it's going to be harder with Banshee's Veil. That item's almost completed. 
start to stack up the MR against an Akali, against another AP Solar Lanner in the Gwen. Gonna have a lot of use as Hyman Dean does the most damage. <laughs> Lola did the most damage in that last team fight. It was a short one, but still, I guess it just kind of shows you the state of uh, the state of this sport. Most definitely. Kara, I noticed that he only did maybe 200 damage, so I would say yeah. that fight technically counts as a 4v5. But I didn't notice, but Aphelios did the most damage after opening up the gap, and although Shanks one-shot the Wukong straight away into the fight, this Aphelios is starting to become a huge problem with his range. Been given time there, right? But here we go. The needlework comes through. Shallow, whose angle is actually great, but the third shot doesn't connect. Meanwhile, Cassante diff. Holy moly! Finding his way into the back line, but hell yeah, getting a response. Many people dying across some of the streets. Can't trust oh. it out, but hope that's a semi finals. World 80 carry for you. The Chad move forward is always the right way as WE win out the fight. Three members left standing, pushing down mid. The Scatter of the Week on LWX close as they come. And Hope and Shanks standing strong with Iwandi once again. What a beautiful team fight coming out for WE where they trade 2-4-3. But once again, the same thing happened where this Syndra was just providing so much zone for the Aphelios. As we get a replay here, they let the first tower down. But Lola is trying so hard to find these angles and they engage onto the Soraka. And looking at this team fight, Syndra comes in, gets a stun, and the ultimate is just so oppressive with the DPS from ADC free hitting in this team fight as well. Nice committal with the flashes, and I really respect it. I have to say though, Hope just firing away, you just said it, the damage from the ADC is like Hope sitting there with Infernum. I don't know if anyone's seen Scarface saying hello to his little friend, Hope is just firing down the line. And it was beautiful to watch. And for WE, we look at what that fight meant. Well, apart from the ego and the build-up, <laughs> like it meant quite a lot to set up for Vision around the Baron. While well, maybe in the bottom side, it sets up to take one of those summoners away in the ghost. Biu Biu wants to knock back, but doesn't find it on Shalau, who uh, his ultimate all-out was available, but chooses not to burn it here, as it was just ghost for ghost. The main weakness that FPX has in these team fights is they're all short range. We have three melee champions from the side of FPX in their top side. Kalista and Heimerdinger technically don't have extremely long range, especially Kalista up against Nephelios, unless you're straight up in Hope's face. Oh. But the dong is under fire. Lola has to flash away immediately as Hong sets that up with a nice cease and desist. Around Baron as well. Nothing going to be started for the time being, but Hung is sitting on a ward, so. Won't be able to find Lola with the same disguise. We have the stopwatch available for both a jungle and mid lane for the side of WE. And this Syndra decided to go a Banshee's Veil up against the Akali and Gwen. Once again, two AP solo laners for the side of Blue. And Banshee Veil can be the difference between the Akali getting a good flank onto the Syndra while the Aphelios is getting pocketed by the Soraka. Oh. Wards, wards win games. Good scatter the week. Hell yeah, just going to be tagged out. Uh, Kitty, further to what you're saying, Stopwatch and Banshee's Veil together. Just insane yep. to kill this Syndra. And as you were mentioning, I mean, Shank's going to be hard as Hung just flashes on into Hell yeah. No care in the world. Doesn't even have the ultimate. And I guess that's just a summoner down. Was it worth it? I guess people could decide as we set up a dragon in 20 seconds. Or Baron, the depending on what FPX do. The FPX? for this Baron is so insane. They have a Heimerdinger, Callista, and Gwen. They can rush this whenever WE makes the slightest mistake. Well, WE are gonna get the push out first. The mistake might be not checking for care in the back of Dragon, or it might be starting up this Baron here, and giving WE a chance to pick off the pieces. Right now, Kitty, it's pretty scattered. Like, care is not moving from down the bottom side of the map. Does have teleport available if this Baron is committed to, but FPX are just trying to draw WE in. Dragon is up and available for the side of W, who has planted all their vision in the bot side. But FPX is just going to keep juggling between this Baron vision and threatening the top side of the jungle. Spotted out with the ward here, Hung. Just going to be seen from over the wall. Lola trying to poke down. Uh, WE still committing in this top side. I mean, Care has just been AFK in one of these bushes. 
now for quite a long time. You can't say that after he does 200 damage in a team fight. True. That's very true. Maybe it's too soon. Maybe he's just hoping that it's either Hope or Shanks who move in without the support. Even the Soraka would be a good pick to set up for Soul Point because Kitty is two dragons for FBX. I understand this, but Care has been in this bush. He is like, finding the flank onto this ADC because if this ADC doesn't die before Dragon falls, then FPX can't deal with Aphelios. Well, it's well said, but it's a lot of time commitment here. Elderbex is bound onto Bu Bu. Not enough damage at the time being as Ren shows us how little he's affected. Lola now going to spot him out as Bu Bu zoning off two members by himself. Kasabe is a loose unit at that as he tries to set up for the Q passive. And set up for the knockback. Shanks now zoning off Kara as well. Low health bars on FPX. Needlework comes through. FPX have to make the play, but the scout of the week goes everywhere. Shanks sends him up to stand with their mouth wide open. But oh, Hung, unfortunately, was gawking himself. Dragon getting low, but there's no smite. However, WA still to kill with the flat forward from Hope, who doesn't kill how yet. Yeah, LDX with the ultimate as well. A good knockup. It's a three man, but FPX don't have any damage there. Bubu goes all out, plays the Aurelia game, and makes it one for one. The fight gets even more chaotic as Shallow, who comes back in off a TP and starts playing with the sewing machine. WE get away, the heal helps him out, but Dragon was acquired, however messy that fight was. Oh my god, that was the most back and forth fight we've seen so far in tonight's best of three series and both TPs being burnt from FPX saved them from that tragedy of being a 0-3. Let's take a look at what happened. So Kara was planning to make that flank angle onto the ADC, but Heng gets one shot right away from the Syndra. And there's just so much CC coming out of this Syndra who's playing more of a utility role. And they juggled between this dragon nicely where they secure the dragon for the second one. And then oh. the flash in is very unfortunate because he gets instantly Callista ult and saved. But this Gwen taking in here is so crucial while Bubi is 1v2ing in the bot side. Gwen starts to chop, and that is exactly what this Gwen is meant to do. I just realized that Bubi sent LWX over the wall, <laughs> and so he, he kind of sealed his own fate, but kept LWX alive inadvertently as well, it feels like. And we are once again back to live with no solid answer as to how this first series of the LPL resolves itself. A great one to kick us off, but... Still a big surprise is how yeah comes in with a cyclone. The whole of WE are here. That is an ulti down in front of Baron. That is a pretty important one for FPX there, Kitty. But nevertheless, they are gonna start this Baron and They're try their it. heart out. Need a ward. I want to see the rend available. 6k, you're right. The rend helps out. The TP though immediately comes through as Lola goes down to half HP. Bubu now in the back of the pit. He's stacking up the Q yet again. Presses W. Rams on forward as Hung now with the Vault Breaker as well. Salt and Battery. Look at the back line though. Care on Hope! The Akali slashes and dashes through. That could be everything for FPX as WE oh, are getting slaughtered. And Care may have just won the series. Scatter of the Week builds space but no stun as LWX ran for a shutdown. Care is a madman with the sick Akali play of the series. The Ray boss has finally fallen down for WE with Hope getting instantly deleted by Care. His eyes was on the prize and he got rid of that carry right away. Without the safe feelings available for these team fights, the Kalissa just got to do whatever she wanted. Because the Cinder decided to opt into a Banshee's Veil for her second item, she won't do enough damage to go through the Immortal Shield Bow and the Wits End from Kalista. Oh, good point. The damage not being enough was seen there. Elder X survived in the sliver. And now with the GA picked up too. I mean, it's just such great position for FBX. Let's watch again, Kitty, because this looked pretty good to start with a lot My burn eyes in front of Baron. Are on care. Look at how he solos the ADC of WE and deletes him instantly. Xiao who creates enough pressure where he is flanking onto the back line of WE and it gets too scattered for the team on red where i wonder was on the other side compared to the aphelios and she wasn't really able to reach the aphelios from the gwen and akali zone did you see lola got thrown in lola decided oh, to get really? thrown in with the fates call <laughs> and was so low he had to flash out immediately but that knock up 
actually made the play even better. So shout out for the energy that comes through from this Heimerdinger support. As after that play, Kitty, Baron's been picked up. A four-item Callista we talked about, but FPX now in charge and snowballing through these two lanes with the Baron buff. Inner turrets are going down quick. Now, with Baron being picked up by FPX, the game tempo is at an all-time high, and that's exactly what FPX wants. They want to stop the Aphelios and Syndra scaling to their third item, yeah. although Aphelios did pick up his third item after that fight. This Syndra is still critically lacking in damage until she reaches that Rabadon's, because Cassante, in reality, with the Vi, is just going to provide the front lane and the tank. Oh! Teleport! Teleport does come through. Care looking for the kill in time. Sure, it can flip! Take oh e. my god. I, I don't know where it was. I think it was in a G2 game in the LEC. We've seen cross map shuriken flips. Uh, luckily, that time though, that one was not taken. Otherwise, uh, I think Shanks just gets a freebie. So, teleport comes lane. through. Yeah, we are just starting again, aren't we? Hell yeah, trying to get out. Hung, rather, actually burst it down in the end. That Bolt Breaker went nowhere. That's a flash, that's an ulti, and that's a dead jungler kitty when Dragon's now live. Are WE going to wait in this rush? Well, the answer okay. is yes. Cares there with the Shuriken flip. The level 16 Akali doesn't connect. As that Scatter the Week is pretty good. But it only furthers FPX back into the Dragon Pit. Where they move to Soul Point in this 31 minute game. And continue to remain in control after that last team fight. Although Hang has had extremely good um, performance in the early game, I feel like he just becomes a bit silent when it comes to these late game team fights, where he is the one dying first from all the burst of FPX, and they're lacking a frontline for the side of WE. Okay, yeah, might be caught out though. Has to flash away. Ophelia is still going to be able to reach here, but the damage is not enough. That's a summoner down here for the Akali, who got caught with a great scatter of the week from Shanks. So, although we do talk up how FBX are playing out this game, Kitty. You know, that Syndra, now with the Rabadons, by the way, is still a big threat that FBX have to deal with and still have to worry about that clock you were talking about. This game is whoever gets one shot first, but bringing it back to yeah. the way that W can come back into the game where Syndra has picked up her Rabadons and that Aphelios has also hit or nearing his fourth item spike, they should realistically be playing towards the front and they should be kiting backwards with the Syndra CC available with how she's building. She was a CC bot, but now with the level 16 in hand as well, she is someone to be afraid of as well. And we've got Nakali without any solid MR as well there, Kitty. So it does feel worth mentioning that Care can just be, I guess at some point, one shot, right? Because I don't know how many stacks Shanks has, but we know once he gets 100, that 15% execute with his ultimate, uh, with the new ultimate rather, is something worth mentioning. W moving towards the bottom side for now, though. Nothing up and available here. Uh, the Baron's up in 145, but we have a quiet time on Summoner's Rift. And, Kitty, it's kind of amazing. We came into this, you know, talking up some of the key players, like Care, like Shanks. They're stepping up in game number three. They are the people that we're watching in this third and final game. And I guess the level of improvement in the offseason has been kind of grand. It has been a huge improvement for both teams in particular, but Shanks and Kara being both new players to the LPL scene, I'm very impressed with their performance so far. Expectations of LWX and Hope maintains, but they have also mm -hmm. proved that they have the experience and they have the veterancy for such tight games like this best of three. And again, it's a good start to the season, not only because of what we've seen, but because WE we're the most concerned about being 0 and 16 last split, but uh, also, FPX were a team that, you know, lost Khalid. FPX were a team that we hope didn't lose their identity as Bubi looking for a knockback here up in the top side. Able to just step on back and shield up. And deny FPX from pushing on this turret, but further to what I was saying, you know, FPX are a team that had to reestablish themselves here this year with LDL talent in Lola, in Howie. Yeah. They've been top of the LDL and uh, in that up echelon for quite a while, but. The point is, LPL is so different. It's such a different environment that you kind of can't... <laughs> you kind of can't get hopeful for some of these newcomers because Shanks was the same. Kitty mm -hmm. Shanks was uh, quite fresh as well as Hung. Ooh, trying for an ultimate through the mid lane. And I guess it's just about, you know, how they're prepped in their team itself. As for WE, 
Prep is going to be around the Baron. Now, Kitty, I want to talk to you a little bit about this, how this sets up, because WE are just starting it right the off the bat. The red and white. Oh, boy. Means everything's all right. Teleport into the back lines. You can see a ward from WE is going to spot out care, but is the Baron still going to be standing there? How yeah, is trying to run in okay. quick, but getting zoned away. Bubu doing that. Care's trying to jump on top of Shanks. His Baron is left for the time being. That's the wish burn. But for WE, their health bars still need a little bit more as Shanks is destroyed by Care. But look at the health bars. WE might be left with four, but FPX are pretty low on two core members. And you still have yourself Iwandi on this Soraka. They're trying to reposition up around this Baron, but trying to find a pick on anyone who isn't oh, Shao Lao Hu. Maybe it's okay for the time being, but there's no follow-up as the range can't hit that, uh, that Hallowed Mist. Dryden Soul is also spawning 40. But are we like just going to play the, the <laughs> dance around Baron instead? Are we ever going to get towards the Dragon Soul? I mean, FPX is starting up this Baron Kitty. When Callista Heimerdinger, this Baron is going to die extremely fast if WE doesn't decide to pull the trigger. Well, Hung has flash. It's what's going to take. He goes in, but he's got to go straight back out as Baron secured by the Fun Plus Phoenix. A good setback, oh, but yeah. Hope now in danger because Care is on a rampage. This Akali, who was AFK in a bush for two minutes, is now just taking names. Akali is doing so much in these team fights. In the previous fight, where the Akali found a flink onto the Syndra, and she pretty much had a duel where he came out on top. And then now in these team fights, she is pretty much zoning all the damage from WE, where they're they're not able to kill the Callista and Heimerding as they wish for. And with Baron and Dragon Soul going to their pockets, this is looking so good for FPX. Yeah, that Mountain Soul up against some of these core damage sources. Uh, Kitty, we'll look at the replay again, though, because Care was spot on the ward, but Shanks still walks in. Shanks did walk in. Uh, because the Kali didn't have any MR, perhaps he could have uh, won this 1v1, but Kali landed every single ability onto the Syndra, living by a slither of health. But look, oh, we're back to reality, but the red and white from Aphelios was just so oppressive where they couldn't really walk yeah. up until they healed up just a little bit more. It's crazy though. Again, Care really feels like he's doing so much. Is that the ultimate from Lola used on the photon grenade? Not gonna find Hope who just walks out of there. But FPX are now starting to assault up in this top lane. Kitty, the inner turret is gonna be under threat next with the Baron buff. And we talked about the Mountain Soul shield. It's gonna help them play so much more aggressive than they've already been doing. Is even here oh maybe God. helped out. Care dodging the ulti though. That's a quick little stopwatch usage that saves him from Shanks ulti whether it would have gotten that execute or not. So he stands strong while WE keep trying to defend. I do want to highlight that Heng does have the GA available for, or he had the GA available for the previous fight at Baron. So that was the only thing saving him from one extra death into his death yep. slot. But I really enjoy this fight. He has to play around this cooldown though, because he does not have a lot of health when it does come to going into a Callista and Gwen. Well. View view, we're looking at him mid. Pops a ghost here, trying to get those Zotofo strikes with a bounce back. But even then, I'm not sure you want Shallow who that close as a good scout of the week comes through. Still waiting to see if WE can get anything from this pick. Hope is very strong, but WE just can't get the finishing blows off. And FPX keep pushing in with this Baron and are slowly whittling away at these turrets. Now moving to 7,000 gold. When, you know, this Baron buff has gotten a 3,000 gold power play worth. Kitty, it's just the pressure from FPX that has done everything but push into the base. FPX is desperate to find an angle where they can break open the base of WE, but with the wave clear from Aphelios and Syndra, it's quite impossible unless they find a pick beforehand. And yeah. with Cassante being so tanky, and look at this Aphelios' health bar with the Bloodthirster and Zonia's available or Stopwatch available, he is going to need to be killed twice. <laughs> okay, well. Looking forward to it because it's going to be a pretty hard task to do, at least on uh, LWX's side as well. I will say the GA hasn't been popped as of yet, but we're kind of just waiting for the next Baron, next Dragon, folks. Top left, it's going to be an Elder. You said the timer is three minutes. Actually might overlap with the Baron timer that comes up in two minutes 30. So, uh, Kitty, I'm going to ask you, picks for WE, you said, but for FPX, what, draw them into a fight? Is that the easiest thing to do here for this team that has so much of an advantage? 
we've seen Vi engage first uh, multiple times in the previous uh, team fights, and she has died instantly. So playing around this G is definitely going to be core, cool, but letting Syndra provide that space for the Aphelios to DPS and playing front to back is definitely the most winnable angle for W to come back in this game. So making this sound like for WE, it's looking pretty damn hard. On the other side for FPX, Kitty uh, might just pause because the Gwen could be caught out here. Shallow who actually on a ward. Here comes the Vault Breaker into the Cease and Desist. Even with a Hallowing Miss, Shallow who unable to get himself out of this one. Scatter the Week doesn't need to land because Hope picks up the kill. Great pick on the side lane. FPX will have their shove of the other two. They have two, no wave. The wave is not there. You're right. Really good pick coming out of WE. Exactly what they're looking for as they found a lonely Gwen trying to pressure it in a 1-3-1 situation for FPX. But with these objectives spawning very, very soon and a 40-minute game average, I am... This can go either way. I think our longest game of last split was 52 minutes, so... Uh, we're already getting a, a pretty long one to start off and we don't even have the mages we were talking about in the game. It's kind of funny. It's like the Aphelios we're looking at instead, who now has a GA available, by the way, and full build himself. It's just interesting how the comps have changed each and every game, and in this final game, we've got ourselves some pretty big late-game threats that we haven't seen so far in this series. The Aphelios being one who's close to level 18, the Gwen we've talked about, who might not be full build, but Shala, who still close to that fourth item, should be a threat that WE have to look after. As Hung sets up, Vault Breaker again, Scout of the Week, and using range. Hell yeah, has a GA, but no MR, apart from the, the Mercury Treads. And you can see that Shanks is just pushing him past his limits. Oh, that huge. ultimate's going to be used. Hung found a great pick. Scout of the Week hits oh, the Wukong in a clone as well, but that TP could be huge as now Care rolls on in. Shanks almost deletes him 100 to 0 with the ulti. As in a choker, Gwen comes into form. But Bubu's now arrived with the fellow self follow through from Hope. It's looking good for WE. I want he's just keep killing them back up. Maybe someone needs to kill Soraka because no one's dying in WE. The white and green coming out of the Aphelios with the Hurricane available. Everyone was getting shredded oh, in that team fight. But now they have to challenge the Baron in a four versus five. Care's coming in from a flank. Watch for Iwandi who's so low could be one shot here with Care almost having his ulti up and oh. hope. Gale forces two man grab at him. That's what you expect now with the scout of the week to follow through. Hope only goes forward. You gotta love LPL carries as the Elder now spawns Kitty with no jungler, with no support. I think WE have got this. The Sante is going to try and stop this Baron from being traded as the rest of the team collects this Elder Dragon. But can he stop it from a Kalista rend on this Baron is the next question as Syndra comes in with tons moving of damage. Up. Because the dragon's almost taken down. Even Hope's moving. Hung's left to solo it. And there's Elder. Scatter the Week so close to landing. And possibly with an instant execution. Shanks is doing so much work on this Syndra. And we'll sure know about it with the Elder picked up. Smart from WE there, Kitty. A and this is kind of what we saw in the first game, right? Their macros improved so much that WE now with Elder. Now with the Baron. Have just flipped this game back in their favor and might be looking at their first series win in two splits. Hung gets a really nice engage onto the Wukong where he, on, honestly, this Vi has a Solari by the way. Really huge TP coming out of Xiaohu, but the Soraka has so much healing. Only the Heimerdinger has that heal cut. Soraka lives on one slither of HP, doesn't die, and look where the APL is standing. So much damage with the Hurricane against all these melee champions. He is having the time of his life while Soraka is doing so much in these team fights. And you know, poo on anyone who put WE number 15 in their power rankings on Reddit, man. That's a, God, I'm so <laughs> dumb. I tell you what already, I'm feeling like that's a regret as Hope might be the one who finishes this off. Look at the damage of the turrets with the Elder, with the Baron. FPX don't want to go near them and they're just going to give open this inhibitor. Well, Care has to be careful where he stands as well. I mean, Kitty, Gale Force used. Care hit once. Oh my god, the Calibrum, even a big threat as WE are not slowing down. They want to get their first series win in the longest time as Lola is going to be poked out. Has to be Fate's Call, FBX with the re-engage in base, but Hope gets away. The Execute not oh. there until Lola gets thrown back in. Scatterweek flashed away from Hope with a double. 
from JDG to WE. He brings the roster into fruition, their first series win in two splits. It took a hell of a long time, but Team WE are finally back on the board. The patience from Team WE to stretch the game out to 45 minutes, where Hope was able to engage so many team fights just by himself. He is definitely worthy of someone who represented us at the semi-finals for Worlds 2022. And the skill he showcased on this Aphelios is someone to watch out on this new roster. And in Xi'an in their home arena as well. A great place to secure their first victory uh, from the brink of FPX, making that game look uh, pretty doomed at that mid to late game point. But WE bringing it back so handedly. Props to Hope, props to Iwandi. What a duo, Kitty. Like, Iwandi coming from LNG with not as much playtime throughout the year as we kind of expected. Hope from JDG, as you said, semi final 80 carry at Worlds. But this duo works so well and they're, they're sinking really nicely so far. Definitely.